December 2019, there was a rise of pneumonia cases in China. It was caused by a previously unknown virus that is now named the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. It started first in an epidemic as it occurred in a large amount of people in a specific area at the same time. Then it became a pandemic as it has now spread all over the world. But what exactly is the SARS-CoV-2? The COVID-19 is an infectious disease, which means it is caused by the presence of an infectious agent and can be spread from person to person. It is part of a group of viruses called coronaviruses from the coronaviridae family. But actually, this group of viruses is not new. They were discovered in the year 1930 and at first they were only present in animals. However, they were then transmitted to humans. It is known that coronaviruses circulate in many animals. Sometimes these viruses can be transmitted to humans if they have contact with an infected animal. Uh, this means that COVID-19 can be a zoonotic disease. Because of this, there's a theory that explains the origin of the virus. People nowadays think that this virus comes from animals, especially from bats, and the specialists deny the idea of the virus being created in a laboratory. The structure SARS-CoV-2 consists of a nucleocapsid protein that binds to RNA. Both are enclosed by a protein envelope, whose shape is determined by the protein membrane. COVID-19's structure also includes protein spikes that are crucial for binding to whole cell receptors. Finally, the virus measures approximately 80 to 120 nanometers which is a large size compared to other pathogens. The virus can be transmitted to other humans by touching an infected surface or through droplets that are contaminated with the virus if someone who is sick sneezes or coughs, as this virus is a transmissible disease. This can happen during the infectious period, which is a stage when a person can transmit uh, the disease to others. Uh, the person who carries the disease is called a vector. In the majority of the cases, people are asymptomatic, which means they don't show any symptoms, but they can still be contagious. Nevertheless, people with symptoms that can be mental or physical manifestations of the disease have a risk of dying, especially if they suffer from diseases like obesity or diabetes. To this day, scientists believe that the virus cannot spread through the air, but they had discovered that COVID-19 has the capacity of replication and dispersion that the other viruses didn't have. This is the reason why we are dealing with a pandemic nowadays. The function of the immune system in our body is to keep the pathogens away in order to keep it healthy. Pathogens are microorganisms that cause infections or diseases in our body, and an infection is a disease in a part of your body that is caused by bacteria. In this case, the pathogen or the infection is SARS-CoV-2, and because it is a respiratory system, it has different properties to get inside your body and for you to end up with the symptoms of the disease. Because of this, the first and the second line of defense will react different against the, this pathogen. For starters, we know that the first line of defense is conformed by skin and mucous membranes. But this disease only gets through by mucous membranes, uh, which are parts of your body that contain a jelly-like substance um, that trap bacteria uh, in order to then expel it out of your body, and so no harm has done by them. Respiratory disease um, get specifically to your respiratory tracts and also your eyes. But if this outer layer of your body fails to defend itself, then it will move on to the lungs. Second line of defense, the virus enters to the lungs. In order to confront it, macrophages release interference that are protein produced by virus-infected body cells to help uninfected cells resist infection. But the virus could also block the interference and delay its action. When the macrophages can't contain the disease any longer, cytokine also called interleukins, which are created by white blood cells to fight the virus, start to produce its first symptoms to get the bacteria out of the cells. 
and they also could travel to different parts of your organs. So you start to feel pain in other parts of your body, cough and have trouble breathing. And of course, your body starts to increase temperature in order to kill bacteria. And that's why one of the symptoms of the disease is fever. While this is happening because of the secretion of interleukins in most of your organs, they get inflamed to get the bacteria out of your body, off over most of your body. If this doesn't work, the virus will battle with the next line of defense, which is the third one. The third line of defense starts working when the pathogen passes the first and the second line of defense. When this happens, lymphocytes attack microorganisms which are considered unfamiliar. Lymphocytes are a type of white blood cells which are specialized to attack specific pathogens in order to eliminate antigens. In order to obtain a response, this line of defense contains two important cells, T cells and B cells. T cells help activate other white blood cells by stimulating white blood cells called B cells that makes antibodies. For starters, T cells are the ones who attack directly the invaders. Also, they recognize cells that have been invaded by viruses. They also help the body to attack infections and they may help fight different diseases. Then, the B cells recognize small and free living microorganisms like bacteria. B cells hide proteins, called antibodies, which work is to bind and inactivate antigen. At the end, when the body is no longer able to defend itself, the virus is settled in the lungs. Incubation period is the time between an individual's exposure to the virus and the arrival of the first symptoms of it. The global lockdown and restrictions had increased a situation in which people have become victims of abuse by their own relatives and are feeling like they no longer have a way out. During COVID-19 pandemic, governments declared that everyone should stay home to stay safe. But for several people, staying home does not equal to safe. To safety since they are trapped with their abuser with nowhere to go. Moreover, uh, when the quarantine um, was established to control the spread of the virus, uh, the rates of domestic violence cases had been increasing in different countries. For example, in France, uh, the government uh, had offered to pay for hotels, hotel rooms uh, for the victims after the reports of abuse jumped by uh, 36% since the lockdown began. Also, two women had been murdered. In addition, uh, India saw the cases double in the first week of restrictions. Um, uh, not only, but also in Tunisia, uh, the woman's affair minister said uh, that the abuse cases had been had gone up uh, five times the usual rate. And lastly, but not least, uh, in England uh, and Germany, there are calls for the government to turn empty hotels into into safe into safe houses for the victims. Um, Sometimes spaces like school or going out for work can be safer for people than staying at their own house. Um, additionally, there has been proven that domestic violence goes up whenever families spend more time together, like on holidays or on summer vacations. Um, but now with all the lockdown situation, of the, all the hotlines are being congested with abuse reports. Uh, when people think about domestic violence, they usually think, um, they usually think of a physical assault, but the reality is that uh, there are many types of abuse. Uh, uh, but I am only going to tell you about the most common ones during this, during this pandemic. Um, the first one is physical abuse or any aggressive behavior withholding of physical needs. Uh, the next one is financial or economic abuse, which is a way to control the victim through um, 
uh, manipulation or economic resources. The third form of abuse is verbal abuse that consists of uh, abusive language like threats or blame or bad attitudes. And finally, uh, sexual abuse. This one can affect the victim uh, physically or emotionally since uh, because it can it can be lead to rape or if the aggressor makes fun of the victim's sexuality or body. Uh, the most frequent uh, causes of domestic violence uh, during COVID-19 are economic problems uh, because people are becoming are becoming unemployed and are worrying about basic necessities basic necessities all of those stresses increase the um, increase um, the bad coexistence coexistence or communication between family members and increase the pressure on households I decided to choose this topic because I think it's really important to know how COVID-19 is affecting victims of domestic violence and what other families are suffering and going through this lockdown period, period in different countries of the world. Before the lockdown, players were living their normal life. To begin with, they were training and they were doing exercise as an athlete must. For example, they were doing many routines to work out their arms, their legs, and also their abs. Since many players are part of a team, they used to do these routines and exercise exercises with their teammates but the players that were not part of any team they were not doing this exercise alone they were having company they were doing it with somebody the stadiums were full of people they were crowded but at the moment when the government made the announcement about coronavirus the sports companies started to panic because they depend on the games that were going to be played and they and that are going to be played. If players do sports, they get paid. But since they were not doing any of this, they had to search for different alternatives. Lucky for some players, they were part and they were working with some modeling companies. So they were getting paid of course, not as much as they used to get. Not only the players, but also workers from these companies started to panic and started to be really affected by this situation. However, not all of this is that bad news. Is bad news because players have found alternatives to train and to have a good communication with their teammates during the lockdown. For example, uh, sports like soccer or basketball are training all together and are having the same training as they used to do when they were all together. Of course, it's not the same. Their body shape is not the same because since they are working together, Yes, they're having similar things and they're trying to have similar things, but it's not the same. It's not the same pressure, it's not the same determination as it used to be. So what's going to happen when quarantine and all of this is over? Well, sports companies have said that the games are going to be resumed, are going to be played as they supposed to. But all of this comes with different uh, measurements, security measurements. For example, uh, players cannot have any type of physical contact with each other. They can only have this during the game. Not before, not after, just during the game. Also, they cannot have any type of crowd around them. They cannot be watched by, any, by anybody. 
well, this idea is not being loved by the players because they said that it's more comfortable when they have people, when they have crowd cheering them and telling them to win. In my opinion, I think that it's really important to keep the communication between teammates and it's really good that they are. It's really good that they have found alternatives to keep the traits, to keep the exercise as similar as it used to be. Not the same, but as similar as it used to be. I think it's really... Now I'm going to talk about what has been happening during this quarantine with the art community. Um, to start, I want to say that I uh, chose this topic because it's really close to my heart. I always liked um, musical theater and singing and dancing. Also, uh, my great aunt is a painter and she really gave me her testimony to say today to you, Moni. Uh, and I really hope uh, you enjoy it. Um, firstly, I'm going to start with Broadway. Now, Broadway is a um, really cultural part of uh, not only New York, but also London and Paris. Um, but the thing is, because of quarantine, they had to close it. And it's really bad uh, for uh, not only the leading roles, which are celebrities, so they live okay, um, but also the cast, the backup dancers, and the crew members that really um, do everything uh, for this musical to happen. Um, the thing is, uh, now with quarantine, they really need the money and uh, however, a lot of people are helping them now, including uh, these celebrities or YouTubers or uh, different people who are raising money uh, in order uh, for them to feed their families and themselves. Um, and now, well, there's Todrick Cole, which is a YouTuber slash ex-Broadway um, actor. Um, he used to play in a lot of uh, musicals. So he uh, is selling now all um, his costumes and all these um, makeup uh, from their previous, his previous musicals to, um, in order to give the money to the ones who need, um, which is pretty good. Uh, uh, next up, I'm going to talk about the musicians. Now, the musicians are pretty uh, different. From their from the Broadway uh, cast and crew, they usually stay at home until they have to, they had to rehearse somewhere or they have to do a show. Uh, now, um, usually they are well taking more time to rehearse due to the fact that, that they are um, at their homes. Um, so their schools and their academies and all this uh, type good stuff send them send to them their homework and um uh the lyricists do their homework to send that to them um in order so they so they can do shows when quarantine is over but they get pretty bored doing this so they usually go outside to their balconies and to uh different parts of their neighborhood and to play this music uh, to play this music to sing uh and to show other people what they can do uh, this is pretty great because it um, it makes everyone happy, uh, especially the ones that suffer from anxiety uh, because of social distancing. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the testimony, finally. Um, so my great aunt, um, she lives in Medellin and uh, two years ago her, her husband got diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she had to stay at home uh, for a long time um, to take care of him and also uh, because of um, because she sold down uh, and if she has to work a lot to work a lot she gets pretty tired she usually gets pretty tired so she um, so with quarantine she can stay at home and uh, sell their do their paintings and then sell them on eBay and on other parts which is pretty great um, and now she can uh, stay at home and and uh, take some breaks and do the best she can. Uh, finally, um, I really learned from this that everybody in this community want to help each other. And it's pretty great 
because um, that's the people we need in this world, the one that um, really um, help each other uh, during this quarantine and also uh, they're like a big family so I wish one day I could be a part of them. During this pandemic, in addition to the serious health and economic problems the world is going through, we have been able to see how society has reacted in very different ways. We have seen a diverse, still strictly contradictory perception about healthcare workers. However, we don't know if this is due to ignorance, lack of education, or just a matter of personal values. Healthcare workers are taking care of us, but we are not taking care of them. And I don't mean it in the literal sense of the word, as their job is to take care of other people. But they are not asking us to do their job. They just want you to stay at home, wash your hands, and use a mask if you're going out. Is that really that hard? If people around the world follow these recommendations, they will be, in a way, taking care of doctors and nurses. As you can see from the way I, I approach the topic, I have a close relation with a healthcare worker. My mom is a doctor, and what I have learned about her experience and her friends is that the treatment given to doctors in Colombia and the United States is very different. So I want to talk about the experience of two different doctors that live in two different countries, but under the same circumstance of a pandemic. I want to talk about what doctors have to go through every day. So first to address the topic of the situation doctors are living in Colombia, I interviewed Marta Pais. She is my mom. She's a pediatrician that lives in Bogota and this is what she told me about her perspective of the situation. What we have felt as doctors and healthcare workers, without generalizing by a large number of people, is rejection and aggression. We have been discriminated for wearing our uniforms. And despite the effort, the fatigue and the risk we have taken, we have been victims of threats and both physical and verbal violence. It is really sad to have friends and colleagues who have received uh, threatening messages in their own homes threatening messages to them and their families. In some cases, they were even asked to leave their homes as they represent a risk for the health of the community. We can't deny we have been more united as a guild, that we support each other and that there is a part of the society that is supporting us too, whom we thank. Anyways, this is our profession and vocation and we will continue doing our job to the best of our ability. Pretty shocking, isn't it? Well, now we know how doctors are feeling in Colombia, but now let's see how they are doing in the, Uni the United States. Uh, for this purpose, I talked to psychiatrist uh, Adriana Chaur. She's a Colombian doctor that has lived in the United States for over 20 years. She is a married woman and mother of four-year-old twins. Dr. Adriana Chaur uh, works at one of the hospitals of the city of New York. And being this city, one of the most affected by the COVID-19, in one of the most critical moments, they had over 800 positive patients in the hospital, at the hospital. Uh, well, uh, for many weeks, her days were long and overwhelming. However, she told me she received support from her friends, family, uh, neighbors, and even strangers. On the windshield of her car, she found messages of gratitude and encouragement. People not only left prepared food at the door of her house, so that it was easier for her to take care of her children. They also called her to see if she needed some groceries or any type of help. Some people even offered to take care of her children. Well, now that we have seen uh, these different uh, treatments that 
are being given to doctors in Colombia and the United States? You must be wondering if you had acted differently, would you have made a doctor feel cared for? Feel cared for? Well, stop wondering and start acting. You can start by smiling at a doctor at the supermarket or by sending a gratitude message to a doctor you know. These uh, little actions can really make the difference. I don't think there is really much left to say, as all of you must have already jumped into your own conclusions. I just wanted to talk about a topic I consider important and worth addressing. Des petits gestes pour éviter la transmission du virus. Il faut respecter les confinements. Il faut maintenir une distance d'un mètre. Il faut aller sèche la médecine si tu as de la fièvre et de la toux sèche. Aussi si tu as du mal à respirer et mal à la gorge. Il faut se laver les mains. Il ne faut pas se toucher le visage. Il faut tousser et éteindre dans sa coude ou dans un mouchoir. Il faut porter un masque et des gants. Il faut désinfecter au gel hydroalcoolique ou à l'alcool les paquets, les chaussures, les mains et les bras. Pour avoir une bonne santé mentale et physique, garder une routine, faire du sport ou faire une activité intéressante. Il faut aérer les pièces de la maison.